Watch this short snippet from our recent live where we discuss a very common case of PCOS with high antibodies and the importance of early detection. Acha. Now, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to start with the three cases. The first case that we have is Megha Matthew. Megha or Meghna? Megha. It's Megha. Megha here? Is Megha here? Okay, I'm not sure. Megha is here. Yes, she's here, Rashi. She is? Yes. I think there's a problem with her. I do need to ask her a question. Ah, there I can see her. I do need to ask her a question. But guys, look at this on the left. Can you see? Um, she has PCOS. Her antibodies are high, almost at 202. She used to take OCPs. All right. Her current symptoms are irregular periods, inflammatory acne, severe hair fall with dandruff, tiredness and sleepiness. For her, the main question was, can I reverse my condition, which is thyroid antibodies and PCOS to normal without medication? Now, my first thing with her is, when you say PCOS, are you taking medication for PCOS, Megha? No, ma'am. I'm not taking medication. Okay. And uh, OCP, how many years were you taking? Uh, not in years. I just took it for three months. My doctor said it for that... Uh... For getting that period regularly now, so just kept for three months. Okay, firstly, um, <laughs> getting your period regularly with OCP may not be the best. I don't know why you went on the OCP, but that's a whole different. A good thing is for me to hear is it's only been three months, guys. For yeah. all of you women, right? If y'all are recommended an OCP, firstly, though, there is no need for most cases. You're ble bleeding profusely, you have end of stage four, you are like in a really bad state. Yes, 100% take the OCP. Otherwise, try and stay away. Also, if you're taking the OCP, have an exit strategy for the OCP. What am I going to do? You know, after I take it, what am I going to do in those three months, six months tops to change my lifestyle so that once I get off the OCP, my life can keep running without it. Most people are on it. I know clients who want it for 17 years, 18 years, 20 years. You know, so with you, because you mentioned acne and hair fall and tiredness and stuff, I thought maybe you are struggling with post birth control syndrome. All of you other women listening, if you've been on OCP, I want you to have a read about this. And there's a doctor called Dr. Brighton, Jolene Brighton. There's also Alisa Viti. I think she's a doctor as well. I'm not sure. These are the people I want you to read up on and understand why birth control pills uh, are not the best option. And if you do it, then what to do after. Okay. So anyway, Megha with you was just three months. So it's fine. Uh, you are not on any medication for OC for uh, PCOS? No, ma'am. It was just a beginner stage. So my gynec told me there is no need to take medications. Just by exercise and lifestyle changes, I can. Amazing. Amazing. That's the good gynec. She's for the keeps. So make sure. Now, now you said, right? Currently, you're saying you have irregular periods, right? Yeah. Whenever it comes, it won't stop. And if it, even if it stops, also I get spotting all the time. You get, you get a lot of spotting. Yeah. yeah. So I, I have my recommendations for you. Okay. Number one, I am not mega. I'm not worried about your, um, uh, your PCOS. I know we can reverse okay. it. All this will get back to normal. That's fine. The problem is with your Hashimoto's. Guys, all yeah. of you who have high antibodies, Y'all have to make sure. See, I don't think you have a problem with um, weight loss, no? You're okay with your weight. I know. I'm underweight. I'm You're underweight. Yeah. You have inflammatory. Yeah. You have a combination of inflammatory PCOS, which is because you have the acne as well, and uh, lean PCOS. Yeah. Okay. Inflammatory PCOS and lean PCOS. That is the combination you are struggling with. Now, uh, the problem with you is the Hashimoto's as well. Yeah. So I. And even your TSH is high. Now, guys, I want you yeah. to have a look at this. If you see your TSH, her TSH is 2.78. Can you all see? 2.78. And most people will say this is normal. It's not. I want optimal for you. I don't want normal. After the damage is already bloody done, you know. Sometimes women come with me 4.9. No, but my doctor said it's normal. No, it's not normal. Above 2 is not normal. I want you to be optimal. Before your body starts crying for help, I want you to figure stuff out, right? So your TSH levels, this is true for everybody, including men. 
I want you to be below two. Optimal is below two. So write this down for yourselves. All right. Anyone who has issues with thyroid, get your antibodies done as well. Now with you, right, Megha, if you have PCOS, day two of your period, all of you other girls who feel like maybe you might have PCOS, day two of your period, you will get blood work done. Uh, your uh, LH, FSH, prolactin, all this will be done on day two. Progesterone is always done between day 21 and 23. That's when you do progesterone. Okay. Okay. And for you, have you done your androgen levels? No, ma'am. You haven't done them. You should get a panel of androgens done as well, which is the male hormones. But I'm guessing that will be high with you because of the acne and the hair fall. When androgens yeah. go, acne and hair fall is very normal. And there's also a typical thing of PCOS, right? Um, now, what I feel is, if you don't feel better in one month, okay, I would highly recommend you go to an endocrinologist and get medicines for thyroid. Because you are at 2.78 with your TSH and because your antibodies are also high. So get your, um, get the medication in if you don't feel better. But with you, I'm not so worried now after seeing you because I know that you have lean PCOS. So you should be just fine. Very important for you to follow those four basic things that I talk about. You know those four principles that I talk about? First yeah. is, first anyone struggling with blood sugar levels, PCOS. First is fat first, plus protein and fat for breakfast. That's very important. Second, carb to veggie ratio. Megha, for you, Lean PCOS, I would still tell you manage your blood sugar levels because of your Hashimoto's. Okay. Hashimoto's and blood sugar levels are very related, guys. So if you have Hashimoto's, you need to manage your blood sugar properly. So that is the second rule, where your carb to veggie ratio. Third is protein. You need enough protein. During the cleanse, we haven't given you too much protein because a lot of you can't digest it. You'll have trouble digesting it because of the low stomach acid. Gauri will resonate with the next case better or anybody struggling with stomach acid or not being able to digest protein, you have to resonate with the next case better. So with you, we need to do those four principles. Try doing early dinners. Actually for you, even a slightly late dinner should be okay because of the lean PCOS, all right? Don't get back on the pill. Give me time. Give me time with like, eating enough fats, following these principles, do all of that. Check your PCOS panel. Check your fasting insulin. Okay. Okay. And uh, go to your endocrinologist in a month if you don't feel better. Your acne, I'm okay. sure, will get better. In the first 15 days, if the frequency of acne comes down, then you know you're, you're okay. Then you know this is working well. Okay. Two things I will recommend. For earlier, you. My... Okay. Yeah. Sorry, last thing I want to tell you, then you tell me. Two things I want to mention yeah. for you. Okay. anybody okay. struggling with high antibodies is I want you to get vitamin C liposomal vitamin C and I want you to get B12 B12 spray the one I recommend when your body is going through stress or at least it believes it's going through stress that's when the antibodies are high you need to give it enough B12 because your body eats up the B12 okay so you'll always be slightly low in B12 I okay. think you are okay with B12 though anyway so B12 and vitamin yeah. C your B12 is also low okay. C 285 yeah. guys I want your B12 to be above 500 again we want optimal so if your B12 is 300 and your doctor is like, Are you, but it's normal. No, it's not. There is a problem with your stomach acids or the absorption is affected. So B12 needs to be above 500 and I would recommend you take liposomal vitamin C as well. And again, Megha, if you don't feel better in about a month or two, go to an endocrinologist and maybe you need thyroid medication. Yeah? Okay.